Bonaire is a small island in the Caribbean near Venezuela. It is part of the Netherlands, and together with the other islands of the Leeward Antilles, it forms a community called the Caribbean Netherlands. This island is not very well known, and many people haven't even heard of it, much like Aruba or Curaçao, although it is located right next to them. But this unique place attracts people who love outdoor activities, as well as those who like to discover new places that aren't packed with too many tourists. I want to warn you right away that if your concept of a luxurious vacation is to spend days on the beach in a beach chair, or in a pool, at a hotel, then Bonaire is not for you. If you like to travel on cruise ships and simply explore new places just by stopping for a few hours in the port, then I assure you that you will only discover a fraction of what Bonaire has to offer you. So stay on board, save money. You will be shown very typical views, you will take very typical photos, buy very typical souvenirs, a pack of expensive salt, and in a day, you will forget where you bought it all and why. The capital of the island is a town called Krellendick. There is also a Flamingo Airport that you can fly to or from Amsterdam, Aruba, Curaçao, New York City, Houston, Toronto, Miami, and Atlanta. The city is very well equipped with several large modern supermarkets with a good variety of products, including European products, beer, wine, sweets, and especially cheese are even cheaper here than in America or Canada. The port has a large pier which can receive several cruise ships per day. It is very easy to rent an apartment on Bonaire. There is a large selection and a large private sector where you can rent a cottage or a condo apartment, and there are also many hotels. We stayed in different parts of the island in order to make it easier to explore. But the most interesting thing is not in the city, not in any of the shops, and not even on the island itself, but rather in what surrounds the island. The secret is that the island of Bonaire itself is not geologically an island, not a volcano, but a giant coral reef pushed out by the sea so that the corals grow around the island, starting from the point of low tide. This is why Bonaire is called a paradise for scuba divers, or diver's paradise. You can go snorkeling here, right from the shore. Since Bonaire is one large coral reef, and corals in deep water starts right at the shore, scuba divers do not need to take a boat far out into sea to dive. They can just park their car and walk into the water. In total, there are about 90 different diving sites on Bonaire, and the most courageous fans of underwater sports consider it their duty to visit all of them, and for a good reason, since they are all different and not one is like any of the other. At your service, there are about 350 species of various marine life and over 60 species of coral. Such a variety of life is achieved due to the fact that on the island, the whole nature, its whole nature and its resources, corals and all its inhabitants of coral reefs are carefully protected and the entire coastal zone to a depth of 60 meters or 200 feet is a marine reserve. The beaches on Bonaire are far from what the beaches are like in the Bahamas. Most of the diving and snorkeling spots are located in the southwestern part of the island. This is where we're going to start. Moving from Craylin Dick along EEG Boulevard to the south, we arrived at an interesting place where sea salt is naturally extracted by evaporation. At this point, the island is almost at sea level and huge pools are filled with seawater for salt extraction. Seawater evaporates quickly because it is always windy on the island. Even in the quietest weather, the wind speed is never lower than 20 kilometers per hour. The unique combination of wind, sun, and saltwater pools creates a lot of foam. This foam, which can last up to several days without collapsing, 
can be one meter thick and fills channels and depressions so that even me, I can be hidden. And the flying foam flakes resemble a snowstorm in 30 degree heat. How this form has formed, the reason is sea plankton that have died in the salt lagoons. Lignins, lipids, and proteins formed as a result of the disintegration of these microorganisms change the tension of the water and under the influence of wind, it is easily formed. The foam comes off, flies away, forming these snow white fields. But not all microorganisms die in water five times the salt concentration of regular seawater. Dunaliela is a saltwater halophytic unicellular algae that feels great there and gives the water a pink color. Look at these mountains of salt. 400,000 tons of salt are produced here annually. Imagine the cost of this 20 meter heap if such a package of Bonaire salt costs $8. You want to swim with sea turtles? Right here, near the salt pier where ready-made salt is loaded onto ships, green sea turtles live and eat and unlike other places, they are absolutely unafraid of humans. They seem to mistake us for harmless big turtles. They calmly swim around, and you can look with curiosity. You can even gently touch them. Sometimes they can swim side by side with the swimmer, touching them with their fins. Tell me, where else in the world can you swim like this with turtles? For example, in the Bahamas, at the sight of a person, green turtles scurry away at lightning speed. Moving further south along the EEG, we drove through many interesting places with coral reefs and on each of them, you can spend the whole day. I will tell you a secret that on Bonaire, it is not necessary to dive with a can on your back to see most of the inhabitants of the underwater world. Almost all of them are located on the coastal strip at a depth of two to 10 meters. So with a mask and a snorkeling tube, anyone can get acquainted with the fish, squid, octopus, moray eels, and see what professional scuba divers with expensive equipment see when diving into the depths. After driving, a little further down, we got to the historical place where in 1850, slaves were working on salt extraction. They lived four to six people in such a small booth, working all week and returning on weekends to their families in the city of Rincon. They walked seven hours to get to the town located on the northern part of the island and returned back on Sunday. Driving further along the only road in this part of the island, which is leased to one lane while remaining a two-way road on the left side in the southernmost part of the island, there is a Pelkamir nature reserve occupying 55 hectares of land. Various birds live in this place, but it is especially famous for the fact that it is a nesting place for 5,000 American flamingos. Tourists are prohibited from getting close to these flamingos so as to not disturb the protected birds, but you can admire them and photograph them from the road. The island is known for its large population of flamingos, as well as a large colony of wild donkeys introduced here by the Spaniards in the 16th century. Do not forget to take carrots or apples with you, so if you see the donkeys on the way, I think they will not give up a very sweet treat. They are not particularly afraid of people and walk around the island freely, much like tourists. You can see feral pigs and goats that also live on the island. Continuing on the road around the island, you can reach the bay called Lac Bay. This is a very interesting place. During the four weeks of our stay on the island, we came here several times. It's a shallow bay with blue water enclosed by a barrier reef and surrounded by mangroves. Around it is also a nature reserve. 
It includes 2,076 hectares, of which 100 hectares is the bay itself. And this is the habitat of rare and endangered birds of frigates, egrets, hurons, and the rare yellow-shouldered parrots. We decided to go snorkeling around the barrier reef, but it didn't work out as we arrived at the Lac Bay at high tide. The overwhelming waves from the sea created a strong current at high tide, and we were constantly blown to the side. Even when we were wearing life jackets, we soon realized that this was a dangerous idea and decided to go back to the shore. When we were returning to the shallow water, we were carried to a colony of giant sea urchins, or black diademas, and one of us was severely injured by stepping on the sea urchin. You can watch a detailed video on our channel about the black diadema, sea urchins, and sea egg urchins, which are eaten by the locals as a delicacy, and what you would do if you do step on a sea urchin. Sometimes in mangrove shallows, Lac Bay water, you can stumble upon beautiful, large, inverted jellyfish called Medusa cassiopeia. This is the only jellyfish species that like to hunt in shallow water upside down. They look harmless, but if you walk past one or swim over them, you will soon feel a very severe itching, stinging, pain, redness on your skin, as you will have been burned by the poisonous mucus that these medusas are throwing away or injecting into the water, defending themselves from their stinging cells, Lac Bay is perhaps one of the few places on the island where you can go fishing. If you have bought a fishing rod with you, you can see the continuation of this journey through Bonaire in part two of this video. So thank you for watching this part. Leave any comments you have below and don't forget to subscribe.